Hello, makers. Welcome to Always Yarn First, a podcast about knitting, crochet, spinning, and all the yarn and goodness in between. I'm Lindsay, and I'm coming to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. And as always, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Always Yarn First. Welcome. Before we get into it, just a couple of reminders. Um, I am co-hosting a year-long make-along with my friend Lori, which is hashtag nothing but double. You just have to hold any yarns double and make any size blanket. Uh, so you can use that hashtag or go to um, Arkansas Yarn Co.'s Ravelry group and post your finished objects there. Also, I will be teaching a Tunisian crochet class, a beginner Tunisian crochet class at Arkansas Yarn Co. on Saturday, August 5th. And you can um, sign up for that now and I have linked that below. So that's all the admin things, I think. So welcome. It's episode 42. Um, today is Sunday, July 23rd. Usually I have my video posted early morning on July or on Sundays. Uh, but the start of the Arkansas Yarn Crawl was Friday. And so I was at Arkansas Yarn Co. all day Friday and Saturday. So I wanted to podcast after I was there so I could show acquisitions and um, put in some pictures and whatever. And so the podcast is going up today, but just a little bit later than usual. So what do we have? I am in a new location because I usually record like from my desk, which is in the living room, but we had moved my desk around because I was feeling a little bit cramped and the lighting from that is just like full shadow and it was horrible. So I'm trying this. I am in my dining room. There's a lot of natural light in here. I have my ring light. So I'm hoping I have moved all my stuff. Usually the benefit from filming at my desk is I have my cart and my acquisitions literally already next to me. So I don't have to move anything, but I have a lot of stuff to show, which again is why I wanted to wait to podcast to show the yarn crawl haul. Uh, so then I can put it away. Um, but I think I have everything next to me. So there is a lot to talk about and show today, which is exciting. All right. So as always, I will have, um, timestamps below. If you want to jump around, like acquisitions aren't your thing. Spinning isn't your thing. You can jump around below. I try to put in links below to shops where I have gotten things, stuff like that. So uh, welcome, let's get into it. So if you're new here, um, every episode I name off of song titles because before my love of yarn was my love of music. I used to DJ and I love almost all types of music. And so I always pick a song that I feel is relevant to that week's theme, whether it be projects or just the craziness of the week. So this week I'm going back to my boys BTS if you're into K-pop music. Uh, the song is Moving On because if you watch the last podcast, I you know was stuck on that Pressed Flowers sample shawl and I wasn't doing a lot of other making because I was on a time crunch. That is done. And so I feel like afterward I was just freed and was casting on the things and picking up other things and it felt really good to just move on from that project. Enjoyed that project, but happy to move on. So I have a playlist for my podcast, which includes every song that I've named every podcast episode after. So you can find the link to that below if you'd like to see what kind of music I'm uh, using for these. So I hope you check that out. All right. So today we have finished objects. We have new cast-ons. Of course, we have whips. We have spinning. We have acquisitions. Um, so, and then with acquisitions, I'll, I'll also mention a few uh, projects I'm planning with some of those acquisitions. So, finished objects. As mentioned before, the pressed flower shawl is done. Also, in case those of you were wondering, I had mentioned last time how I made a mistake in a row. I went ahead and I had time, I finished the shawl first, 
and then I went back and I did um, duplicate stitching. I added just, I just had to do a row. It was one row that was a mistake. And so it was very easy to just go right across the row and do that. And it wasn't perfect um, because duplicate stitching is really good when it's stuck in that stitch, when it's all in that stitches on one side. But this, besides the flower print, is garter. So it wasn't perfect, but the point was you still had the little pops of pink, which is what my eye was focusing on that was missing previously. So I was happy with it. I was a bit nervous to send it back, but they got it. They were super happy with it. So that was a relief. Um, it is done. It is in New York at the Argyle um, Yarn Shop as a sample there. So Grill as that's over, I will put in a picture. I didn't really take great pictures, again, because I was on such a time crunch. The day I finished it and did that duplicate stitching, I literally had to block it, which is the picture I insert here, and I had to get it in the mail. I actually, because they had already given me a prepaid um, package, just put it in. So after I gave it a really good steam block, I immediately put it in the package and drove it to the post office that night um, because I was so paranoid about getting it there on time. So all is well. That is done. I'm happy with it. Um, you've heard me talk about it. I'm happy with the pattern. It was very enjoyable. Um, but I think that shawl is too dense for me because that was on my personal wish list. I think I had the satisfaction of making it, which was fun, but I don't need it in my wardrobe. Now, um, Amy Christopher's, who makes that pattern, also has a hat version of it, a pullover, and a cardigan. Um, my friend Victoria, yesterday at the yarn crawl, she was working on her pressed flowers cardigan. And I think that would be fun. It, you know, again, would be dense, but it would be nice and warm for the winter. So maybe eventually I could see myself doing a cardigan or the hat version of it because I really enjoyed doing the patterning of it. So that is done. And for that shawl, I used Luminous Brooklyn Dazzling DK in the colors Walnut and Roseland. All right, my second finished object I am wearing. This is the Streamline Tank by Alexander Tavel. Um, I had chose not to do the patterning down the front or back. It's just a tank. I did the side stitches as said, which means also that. This is a loose tank top. I have it over a camisole. I like it because it just kind of sits freely on you and it doesn't feel hot. You're just wearing the camisole and that's it. Um, otherwise, this is a very breezy and I used Universal Yarn Bamboo Pop in the colorway Winter Squash, which I got from Arkansas Yarn Co. And this is my second one. And I love this tank. Um, I love her patterns. She had just had a sale on all of her summer tees. And I went online to look about buying some more. And I realized she had like, I think it was like over 40 summer patterns, which is amazing. So she's also known as, known as two of Lauren's online, if you want to follow her. All right, I have one more finished object. Again, something I've been talking about um, is the Tunisian crochet class I'm doing. So I've been just trying to work on my skills for that and just playing around um, with it. So we are going to make a dishcloth at the class just because we can get through that or it might be you know a coaster if um we don't have enough time but just to get people accustomed to it so i made two more the shapes are kind of weird like again i was just taking my skein i had and just playing with it so both of these are just the tunisian simple stitch which is what we will be doing at the class um if there's enough interest and people want to learn some more about tunisian I figured the next class would be the Tunisian knit and purl stitch because sometimes people that are crocheters like the look of knitting, but they have a hard time learning knitting. So the Tunisian knit and crochet or knit and purl stitch is exactly what it says. It looks exactly like um, knit and stuff. What you will see, I have another project where I'm working on the Tunisian knit stitch right now. So you will see that uh, shortly. But 
a lot of times people want the look of it, but don't want to learn knitting. So if this class is successful and people would like to learn some more stitches in a class, that will be the next class. So yeah, I just did a couple dish cloths and these are in Queensland Coastal Cotton. And this is the color Cobalt. So yeah, these will just be for me. And that is my finished objects. The three, I'm so excited about that. And of course I have cast on some things. So let's get into that. All right, so first I'll talk about this since we're just mentioning Tunisian crochet. This is in my Paradise Island bag. And I follow Petra at Unraveled Yarn Shop, which is in Paragold, Arkansas. And she um, said she was doing this thing called the Tunisian Basics Crochet Along. It is by Heart, Hook, and Home online. Um, and it's basically, when I first learned crochet, I actually followed Moogly, um, Moogly blog, I guess. And every year, I, I think she still does it. She, people that want to learn crochet different stitches, they do a granny square in a different patterning each month. So you end up making 12 squares, pretty big ones, and then you connect them all into a little throw or something. And it basically helps you learn that stitch. So this is exactly the same thing, except you're doing Tunisian crochet. So um, I saw Petra was doing it and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm trying to up my skills in Tunisian crochet. So I thought that sounds fun. So I got on and she is doing, uh, Heart Hook Home is doing a square a week. And I think it also is 12 weeks. If you want to make a blanket, she suggests doing two of each type of square to join in the end. Right now I'm just doing one. I don't know what it'll become maybe like a runner for the table. I have, I have a very long table in the kitchen here. Um, I don't know. I'm just right now, I'm just doing it for the skills and to keep up with it. And I am doing it also to use up my DK scraps. So the first one I made was this. If you'll recognize this from a previous sweater, this is Arkansas Yarn Co. at the, her DK. And this is the color shockingly, which Lori special dyed for me. It, of course, blows out on the camera, but this was the Tunisian Simple Stitch. So if I get up close, you see it's the exact same stitching I did on those washcloths. So that went super, super fast because I had been making a bunch of dishcloths. This one I'm in the middle of. So this one is the Tunisian Knit Stitch. This rolls really bad. You do um, a crochet border after you're done with it. And then you, of course, once you attach it and uh, block it out, it'll be fine. But right now it's, so this is the Tunisian Knit Stitch. This is using scraps from Hot Knit and the colorway three tequila. So I'm gonna put it real close and you can see those knit stitches. They look like it was knit, except of course you can't feel it, but I don't know, maybe if you grasp the density of this. This is thick and really squishy like crochet, but on the front, if you just look at the front, it looks like knitting. So it's been really fun and it's been flying. I just uh, didn't take it this weekend to the yarn crawl, so I'll probably, I might pick it up and finish it today. We have a game night tonight with friends and this would be super easy to work on. So yeah, if you want to join in that, I have it linked below um, both the scheduling of squares and then you can just click each square to see the pattern. So it's all on her website for free um, that you can follow along and use your scraps. And um, so I can't remember what day of the week it comes out. I feel like it's like a Wednesday or Thursday, which means if I get this done, the next week there'll be square number three. So yeah, that's been really fun. Fun way to use some scraps up, which I always need to do. All right, other cast on. All right, I cast on a vanilla sock. So this is in my trappings and trinkets bag. I got this at the Fiber Universe in Peoria, Illinois. 
she has a bunch of bags there. So this one is just adorable. Octopus. Um, I had done, I am in the Nitty Natty uh, Love and Stitches membership. And we had done for her sock week, if you wanted to, you could sign up to do a trade with somebody. You'd be matched up. And you basically wind up 100 gram, a full skein, and you keep 50 grams of it. And then you send 50 grams to your buddy and they do the same. So this is one that was in my stash from a few years ago when I was doing the Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, I was doing a sock, uh, socks per month. And this was like the last skein of Desert Vista Dye Works I had on hand. And have you ever had a skein where, I mean, obviously you liked it, so you bought it. But then when you looked at the skein, it's like, you can't imagine how it's gonna be knit up. And so it just sits there. You love the colors, but it sits there and sits there. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna do this one. And then you wind it up in the cake and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then you knit it up and you're like, this is fantastic. How was this sitting in my stash for so long? So I literally just made a true shorty sock, which I don't know if I've ever done. I have made the, um, like the jelly roll sock a long time ago when I started knitting socks, I think. But when I say true shorty sock, I like short socks. So my personal recipe for vanilla sock is I usually do 25 rows before the heel. It's either 10 rows of ribbing and then 15 rows of knitting or 15 rows of ribbing, 10 rows of knitting, basically 25 rows. And then I start my heel. This one, I literally did five rows of ribbing and started my heel. Um, and then obviously finished the foot. And so it is like right up to your heel. So, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was going to, I think the real reason I did this is because the day I cast this on, I was taking my daughter to a theater to see the Spider-Verse for her to see it again. And I didn't have any vanilla sock. I have a rib sock I'm working on, but I can't, I haven't mastered doing rib in the dark. So I needed a true vanilla sock. So I quickly, literally that morning decided, okay, well, I'm going to get a sock going. But then I didn't want to like be like, oh, well, I'm at the heel. So I did the five rows of this and quick did the heel. And so that I was right here when the movie started, which was perfect. That's the real reason why I did the shorty sock. Um, so I knit on that in the movie. And then a few days later, my husband and I and a friend of ours went and saw my movie, which was Mission Impossible. And so I knit a ton in the theater for that movie, too. Uh, so this sock went super, super fast. And let's see, I do have the color worked out. Uh, Desert Vista Dye Works, it is in the bamboozled colorway, and it, does, it is a sparkle base. So I love this. I have not cast on. And then the blue was just in my stash. So I have no clue what that is. Just picked it out to go with it. So I have not cast on the second one yet. I'll probably do that shortly. So again, I have the vanilla sock ready to go. All right. I have one more cast on. And I cast this on quickly Friday morning because before I was going uh, to Arkansas Yarn Co. for the yarn crawl, I was looking at my projects and I'm like, what am I going to bring? I packed my e-spinner with me, which yesterday I spun all day at the shop because um, Twitter fleece. And, but I wanted another project and I think I'd said maybe the last episode that all my garments I were working on were knit flat and uh, seamed after, which are fine. But again, I knew the yarn store was going to be packed. It was going to be very social. And I really would wanted a garment in the round. So I have lots of yarn in my stash where it's already like I've kitted it up with the pattern ready to go. So I kind of look through my cupboard and be like, which of these is top down in the round that I can just start. So 
I picked the Give Me the Tea by Jenny Ansa. It is from the book 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. It is literally the first pattern in the book, so you can't miss it. Um, so yeah, I this is top down. I have a picture here, but I will insert a better picture. So this is, it is literally that simple. It's pretty much looks exactly like that in the front. Um, so yeah, I was excited. Top down, I cast it on Friday before I left for the shop just to, you know, get it started. So it looks super wonky right now. But this is one where you could have chose to uh, fold down. That's why there's like a pearl line. And maybe I'll go in afterward and do that. I don't know. I could do a fold down neckline. But yeah, so I'm past the short rows and now I'm just on the raglan increases. So that's why I have all the stitch markers. Yeah. So this is being housed in one of my French Supply Co. bags. This one I got from Lobby and Ami, her signature yellow. And this yarn, I was super excited when I found this pattern because many years ago, um, Lori from Arkansas Yarn Co. was clearancing out this yarn and I loved the feel of it. And it was super cheap. And I, I honestly don't know if she was clearancing out just to get it from her shop or if you can even find this yarn anymore. But this is Plymouth Reserve Sport. Here is the tag. This is in the color navy. And this is a extra fine merino wool, mulberry silk, and bamboo. So it feels lovely. And there it is. So she only had three balls of it. And it is approximately 348 yards. Now you saw this is a very, uh, it's a short sleeve shirt, whatever. But I had got this not, I mean, I could not pass it up for the price and the feel of this. And I had gotten it and I'm like, I have no clue if I can find a pattern, something to make with this. So it sat in my stash for years. And then this pattern came out and it called for sport weight. And I had enough yardage and I was like, okay, it's meant to be, I need to make this pattern with this yarn. So I think it's going to be a beautiful drape to it. It's just really, really nice. It feels so good. It is a dream to knit with. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one and I'm excited to have an in round sweater again. Like I said, I don't mind the knitting flat. It's all knitting to me, but it is really nice to have an in the round because I found I was doing the short rows at the store and I know how to short, do short rows. It's not hard, but I mean, the store was packed with people and just many conversations and it's really hard to even concentrate on counting stitches or doing short rows. So I wished I had done all that before I got there and just been in the round, but it was fine. It was, it was okay for the purpose I needed. So that is finally all my finished objects and new cast-ons. So let's get in the whips that you have seen before. All right. First whip I mentioned before, my other socks I've been working on. This is in my Black Pearl Magic bag. These are socks I'm knitting for my friend. Um, these are mustache yarns in the uh, Dark Emperor colorway, which is uh, supposed to be Pal Palpatine from Star Wars. Here's the first one I just knit. I will have to do afterthought heels. I'm literally in the middle of a row, which is dumb, but this was the other project I would, some I would get out on Friday if I'm like, okay, I cannot concentrate on short rows with that sweater, but here it is. I've made actually a lot of progress. So here's the stitch marker where I was last time you saw it. And then what's super exciting too, now mustache yarns, if you've never had it before, you get a hundred grams, but she gives it to you in 50, 250 gram 
cakes or 250 gram skeins. So, and it's supposed to be a perfect match. Now I have never cared about matching perfectly. I start one sock and where I've finished the first sock, I start the second sock. I don't care. It's at my feet. I'm not, I know that many people do care, but I honestly, I thought about, oh, I need to make sure these match up right because these are not for me and I don't know if my friend is going to care, but I forgot to do that. But look, y'all, they match up great. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I was like, oh, shoot. I wonder if that's going to bother him. And then I'm like, oh, never mind. We're good. <laughs> So yeah, nothing much to show. These are vanilla socks, not a recipe. I did one by one ribbing at the top and I'm doing three by one for the whole foot because this is the first time I've knit socks uh, for him. So I wanted to make sure they were gonna have a good stretch and fit him well. So yeah, making progress on that. Okay. All right, next. What? Um, you're going to start seeing a lot of blue. I don't know if I had mentioned that in the last podcast. I think I had because when I went to Texas and bought yarn, I bought yarn for two garments and they were both blue. And then, you know, you saw me use, um, no, for this sweater I just cast on, uh, from my stash blue yarn. And then this one, which you've seen me work on before. It's been a little bit. This is a tank top. And again, this was frog yarn from a sweater I had tried to make my husband and I hated it. So I frogged it and again, more blue yarn. You about to see a lot of blue um, coming up. I was making myself say that I wouldn't, could not buy any blue yarn at the yarn crawl because every, all my garments are about to be blue. So this is in a bag by Kelly E. McD. And this is the opal tank. And this again is by Alexander Tavel, who made this design. Um, this is knit flat and seamed up. So I've just been kind of tinkering on it. You see the progress keeper where I was last time I've showed it. So um, yeah, I was on this. And this one is nice. I, I did work on this occasionally uh, when I was working on the pressed flowers because I needed something to just clear my brain. So just like the, the stockinette, you know, the knit on one side, pearl on the other side, I just needed something to just clear my mind out. Um, but I didn't show it on the podcast then because it was like a row here and there. So yeah, doesn't look like much now, but it will be another tank top. And this is in Knit Picks Gloss DK in the color River Rock. All right. Another one that uh, I have tinkered on is my Lamana Luxury Cardigan. This is in a Knit Knack Knits bag. And I didn't really pay attention to how far I've gotten since a little bit. Um, so let me move this. Again, knit flat. This is going to be a cardigan. So you can see my stitch marker here. I've gotten a little bit more progress. This one is slow and steady wins the race, essentially. But this is gonna be like a perfect knit after the fact. It's just very slow getting there. Um, so yeah, for you that have been in a long time, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details. Uh, this is using Arkansas Yarn Co. Her Surrey base held with her Yummy Sparkle base in the colorway Graphite. It's a very um, simple cardigan, simple in how it looks, but like will go with everything. But it is a free pattern. So I would say it's not for beginners because um, it is written like a free pattern in the way that not a lot of explanation, like you need to have some knowledge to kind of translate what she is saying. So um, I love it and I know once it's done, I will wear it all the time. It's just, I have to make myself keep, you know, remembering that as we go. All right, so I have one more whip. And 
this one has a story because I just picked this up last night. It's the first time I've touched this project. But if you watched when I kind of was um, frogging some things, I had picked up, I had started, I don't even know how long ago, the Secret Summer Crop by Jesse Mae Designs. I had a single ply primrose yarn. It was kind of like a grayish black color, grayish brownish black color. Um, and I was using that because you only needed one skein of yarn. And I really wanted the tank top, but I also previously mentioned that for some reason, Jesse made patterns in my brain just don't play nice together. So I ended up frogging it. And I was looking at the color and I'm like, it's not really my vibe. And I thought of Jessa. And so I asked Jess, I'm like, hey, I have this skinny yarn. I frogged, I frogged it. So it's just like a big ball. I said, but would you use it? You can have it. So she's like, yeah, well, what were you making? And I told her. And the next time I went into the yarn shop, there it was. <laughs> a sample. I'm like, she just whipped it right up. Uh, no problem. In the same color, in the same, you know, tank top that I wanted for me. And I'm like, Yep, that looks really nice. Wish I had the um, mojo to make that. So, you know, you don't ask. You don't get things unless you ask. So I just, you know, kind of jokingly said, you know, you, you made that really, really fast. I said, I still really want that tank top. I just don't want to knit it. I said, is there any chance that if I gave you a skein of yarn that you would make one for me? And she's like, yeah, you know, can't tell you when it would be done. I'm like, totally understand that. Um, but she's like, yeah, I'll make one for you. So this, I have this exact same bag. This is a Kelly E. McD bag, but this all is Jessa's stuff. <laughs> um, so this is yarn and I don't remember the color, but I know this was a one-off color, so you can't purchase it anyway. But this is from my stash. This is what I gave her. This is a Hue logo yarn. And it was a one-off colorway. So even if you love it, you can't buy it. Um, so this is one skein. This is what I have left. Actually, it's a pretty decent amount considering. So she has knit this whole tank top. But then she gave it to me so that I could do the straps. Because she wanted to make sure the straps were well-fitting on me. So here it is. So she stopped right here. I had to basically do the first, actually I was over on this side, do first few stitches, bind off across, and then I've done this. So that is all I have done. Um, I need to try it on to see how long I want my straps to be. So once I do this strap and attach it, then I just have to do this strap and that's it. So it's kind of hard to show. So here's so much. And so here's the back. The back is already done, bound off. It is literally just the straps that I have to do. So I love Jessa that she made this for me because I really, really wanted it, but I really, really didn't want to knit it. So she's awesome. So yes, this is hers. And I am going back to the yarn store next Saturday, which is the last day of the yarn crawl. So I told her I would make sure to finish it this week and so I could return her needles in her bag back to her. All right, so that is all of the knitting and crochet. So now let's get into some spinning. All right, so spinning, um, it is still Tour de Fleece. Today is the last official day of Tour de Fleece. There is another, again, what limited knowledge I have, evidently after Tour de Fleece, there's like a, kind of like a women's Tour de Fleece kind of thing. They call it something different. But, so some people are continuing on as that race, but I think I'm going to close mine out today. So first I'll show you with, um, I don't remember all where I finished last time because I have been spinning so much, but I will show you these. 
These are ready to be plied. I think I'm going to do a three ply. This was a bat from Gritty Knits. Um, this was the February bat. So you can see what's in it. Targi Merino, Bamboo, Silk, and Stellina. So yeah, four ounces. I split it up into threes. And I think I'm going to do a three ply, which would be my kind of my first uh, three ply. I say kind of because sometimes when you have leftovers on a bobbin, you chain ply it. You hold, you make a little brace. I think it's called an Andean bracelet. You wrap it around a certain way in your hand so that it all still flows and you're holding three together. But I've never done a true three ply from three bobbins before. So I'm hoping to get that done today so it will count as full skein. And then yesterday I brought my e-spinner to uh, the yarn shop and decided to spin. And so I filled a bobbin up of alpaca with some Stellina in there. And I have another one on my uh, Daedalus Sparrow e-spinner right now. So I'm hoping to fill that bobbin up and ply it with this one. So, um, that is all my spinning. And then you can kind of, so you can see here, these are all the things I have skeined up. So they've been spun and plied, not washed this month during Tour de Fleece. Um, yeah, so most of those, all those bright neon ones are, um, alpaca that my friend Lori ended up dying. So I'm going to have to wash each of those separately because she didn't know if they would bleed after. So I don't want them bleeding into each other colors. So I figured today it's going to be finishing plying and then I'll have my whole stash up there because it'll be done with tour de fleece. But then this week I will wash them all and then I will see how much yardage I actually spun after the fact. I don't think that's cheating, right? I mean, I they're finished. They're done spinning. They're done plying. So I want to get all the skeins off the spinner. And then this week I'll take my time and wash and finish them. And then I'm sure I will do a post on Instagram what my finished totals were for how many skeins I had. So I'm really happy about with the progress I made. You know, I didn't really have a specific goal. It's just to spin more and then in that spinning more to be <clears throat> more consistent in how I spin, which I think I've done <clears throat> because I was spinning this. Um, it was fun to spin at the yarn store because a lot of people um, either that do spin but didn't know any other spinners were like, oh my goodness, I've never seen this e-spinner. It was fun. People were asking questions. It was a really good time. So that was nice. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's all my spinning, but next time I'll, I'll make sure that when I'm done to show a picture and how much yardage I got. It was very, very fun. And from now on, I'm going to just try to make it my personal goal to spin at least three days a week because that consistency doing it all the time really, really makes a difference. And I feel very confident in my spinning now that I've been doing it almost every day. There was a few days I took off because uh, I just didn't have time for spinning, but almost every single day, I think I took maybe four days off that I didn't spin. That's pretty good being like 23 days of the month. So yeah, that is my spinning. All right, y'all, I'm gonna take a little sip. I usually don't, but I'm, my voice is cracking. And we're going to get into some heavy, heavy acquisitions. All right. So I have them divided on the table around me to try to do this in a certain way. So first of all, I'm going to talk about things that I got before the yarn crawl. I'm going to end with the yarn crawl things. So I had, uh, if you watch Young Folk Knits, which doesn't everyone, 
um, is Casey. She also lives in Arkansas. And she was at Arkansas Yarn Co. yesterday with Becky, who Becky does the audio podcast with Casey um, for Young Folk Knits. But she started a spread shirt shop. And so I had ordered this bag. And then, sorry for the crinkling. There is just a lot of stuff, y'all. And I got a couple stickers. So I got this one. And this one. And I'm glad I didn't get too much. I wanted the bag so I'd have it for the yarn crawl, which I did get it before. Um, but I'm glad I didn't add too much because she's added different styles a couple times since she opened the store. So if you order something right when the store opened, go back and look again because she's or she has added some different styles that you can get, which I love. So I didn't order a shirt yet, but I probably will eventually. So yeah, this is my Young Folk Knits swag. Oh, and before that, I think literally the day after I podcast last time, I had ordered a twice sheared sheep order and I got it in the day after I podcast. And so this has been sitting in my bag of things to show for a while. I've seen these on a couple podcasts. I'll get one out. Um, this one is mine. I got a set of pink and blue for me and I put them together. So basically, they squeeze like this so they can be just stitch stoppers or for the, they were great on, I got them before I finished my pressed flowers shawl. And when you have a lot of stitches, you squeeze this on your needle and just push them all across. You don't have to like move all the stitches individually. It just pushes them all across. Um, so these are awesome. And they're, I think, very reasonably priced. So I had got these for me. I had got these for friends. And then while I was on the shop too, uh, you know, she is also known for her uh, row counters, which I have a couple of, but this one I got a um, increase decrease. So you see on one, it has a K and an I. So you know if you're on the knit row or increase row and then the K and a D for our knit row or decrease row, which I thought for a bigger project, that would be super helpful. So yeah, that I got a few weeks ago. All right, what next? Okay, I am, another podcast I love, which I may have mentioned before, is Nitty McPurley, who is Devin Mentry, and she also has a shop. And I am sorry, this is gonna get real crinkly. I have, I love her yarn shop because she just has certain colors. Like, she has lots of different colors, but, She's like, these are my colors. She's not adding all the time. She has a color of the month that she always adds to the shop and it's available until it's sold out, basically. But otherwise, she just has certain colors and her colors are vibrant and gorgeous. They're semi-tonal, most of them. And so they would be perfect for sweater. And I have just wanted to buy her yarn for a long, long time. But I didn't know what to get. Um, so she just had her shop anniversary, and she made some special colors for that. So I got this. This is her shop anniversary kit. And this is five skeins of 50 grams. So basically it's like two and a half regular skeins of yarn. And I thought the colors were just gorgeous. Um, let's see. It is on her Frankfurt fingering base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, um, 50 grams. It is 207 yards per 50 grams. So, um, yeah, I just thought these would look great and I have a pattern I want to use for it. This one. So yeah, uh, I'm really excited about this pattern. I have wanted to make this in my queue for a long time. So when this came out, I'm like, yes, it's going to be a neutral Mazzoni vest or tank top, I call it. But yeah. 
So, got that. Super excited about that. All right. Next. Um, I got, again, I'm on the Nitty Natty um, Discord channel. And we have lots of different uh, channels of conversations. And one is a D stash where people try to sell or whatever, or sometimes just give away their stash. And so a lot of times I, I don't check my discord often, like it's maybe once a day. So I just kind of see random posts and I'm like, Oh, I wish I would have seen that. But I'd previously gotten something last time. I think I had gotten something from Bethany, uh, the wandering pearl that I was super stoked about. Well, I got like the most amazing find. Um, someone was de-stashing all of these mohair. I'll just get one ball out. So this is three, four, five, six, seven balls of mohair. This is all by Southampton Valley Yarns. It's 72% kid mohair, 28% mulberry silk, 25 gram balls, uh, 230 yards. So I have, yeah, a lot of mohair. And the best thing about it is I don't have a project for these, but I don't care because they gave it away. I had to pay shipping, which was five bucks. Um, so I got seven balls of mohair for five bucks. I mean, I literally had to. I am not a red person even. I'm like, I don't care. That is like... A fantastic deal so that was awesome and then um, for another de stash this one I paid for and someone was uh, de stashing this this is luminous Brooklyn so you'll remember that's who I did my sample knitting for and um, I was able to pick five skeins of DK weight yarn Kind of as payment for my sample knitting because that's how many skeins I used in the project. And this was a color I almost got. This obviously is my jam. I couldn't, again, I couldn't imagine it knit up into a garment. So I didn't get this one. But then I saw this skein on a D stash and I'm like, oh, this would be great for a hat. This would be a real funky hat. So this is the same base. It is the Dazzling DK. So it's the same base I used in the pressed flowers. And this colorway is called Blue Bayou. So I was excited to get this one skein uh, for a lot cheaper. That is my D-stash things. And then I got my yarn from that. So this is the color I did pick. Uh, this is called Cambridge Blue. Again, with the blue. I know, I tried to pick another color but I just, the heart wants what it wants, y'all. Uh, I just kept going to this tonal of blue. So again, another blue silk letter is coming. And I am going to put in a picture here. There is a sweater I want to make called the Byline. And that I was actually going to shop for at the Yarn Crawl. And then I realized, I'm like, wait, I'm getting five skeins of a tonal DK weight, which is, this is a DK sweater. And I'm like, oh, well, I could use this as the main color and then just try to find a coordinating, you know, for the stripes. And then I was looking at my stash where I was going to cast on the sweater to bring to the yarn crawl and realized I had four skeins of this. Um, this is Lori's Yarn, Arkansas Yarn Co., Yummy DK. And this is in the color work, uh, the color name Pavement Bubblegum. So this has the pink, but it has some blue specks in there. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this as the stripe to go with this blue, and it's going to be fantastic. So, um, yeah, so that's what that's going to be. So now we're going into the yarn crawl stuff. And so because that was what I was going to shop for, you know, have a sweater in mind to shop for, then I went into the yarn crawl dangerously where I didn't have a project I was shopping for. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be bad. Where well, I don't know. I have so many garments that I already have the yarn for. And like I mentioned on the last podcast, I'm like, okay, my um, yarn stash 
the last couple months has gotten a little bit big, but I'm really going to try to be like, okay, start something from the cabinet where I already have it, finish it, start another thing from the cabinet. Um, that is my goal. So here's what I got from the yarn crop. First of all, I walk in and I see all these bags and Barbie, of course, was a big theme because it just came out. These bag, this bag is awesome. This one has, I mean, I could wear it as like a backpack. I could even wear it over like this. This is a nice size bag. And one thing I, I have a lot of bags, but I need more sweater size bags. I have a hard time squeezing them in to my, even like my, I'll squeeze sweaters into like this size bag. But I like this bigger bag for a garment. And this one has a full pocket in the front, two pockets in the back. It has a zipper and it has another pocket inside. So this maker is, it's not on here, but I have another one from her. Yep, another Barbie one because this cute little basically sock sack, oh my gosh, so cute. I bought two Barbie bags. And this is string crazy bags. And she had a ton of bags at the shop that were just all very well made. Um, so yeah, super happy with that. All of my stuff is in this bag that I have gotten. So I'm going to get them out. All right, so one thing I knew that was coming to the yarn store um, was Chelsea Lux yarn. That was what I was teasing at last time. Um, Chelsea Lux yarn, Lori had been telling me for a while she was gonna get it in the shop and this was not a trunk show. This is now going to be it in the shop. And Chelsea Lux yarn is one of those yarns I've always wanted to try. Um, I've gone on, put things in my cart and then I'm like, no. I'm not gonna get it. So I was stoked to see her yarn in person. Um, again, but I walked in not having a plan, not having an idea for a sweater. I had talked about making the something cozy. Uh, Lori's about to cast that on with our friend Christy. And then I like looked at the pattern. I'm like, I just, I'm not sure about it. So, but I walked in, looked at the yarn and I definitely found a color I knew I wanted. So here's what color I got. This is spring chicken. So this is the fingering weight. This is the Lux 801010. So it's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It is 400 yards. So I got two of those and two of them in the mohair, the same color. So the mohair is 72% mohair, 28% silk, 459 yards. So um, I did my shopping all immediately Friday morning because I'm like, I didn't want anything to sell out that I was pondering over. And um, I'm glad I got this one right away because then when Kristen came in, uh, like after lunch, she bought, I think, four and four of this, so the same color. So there was like one mohair left Friday late afternoon. And I think maybe two fingering left. So I had picked this up right away. So my thought is I didn't have a plan, but either one, I knew with this, I could either make the Andrew M. Mowry Birds of a Feather Shawl, which has always been on kind of on my wish list, or I could make another rocket tee with it, which, if you've been here a while, you know I love that t-shirt. So I bought enough that I, you know, had enough to make something. So, and because Lori's going to be carrying this, I'm sure that after the yarn crawl, she'll probably make another order and there will be more there. So really excited about using this. Okay, the other thing I bought for yarn there was Lori, of course, dyed some special colors for, that were Barbie themed because I bought them both on Sparkle. So this one is 
this one, Barbie World. And I have a plan for that one too. I actually, so that I had enough um, things to work on, I had printed this pattern out before I left the house because it's a one skein shawl. And I've been really craving lace work lately. So I'm like, I'm gonna bring this pattern and if I found a skein that I'm in love with, I could um, cast it on right there. I brought my whole interchangeable needle set. So without giving, there it is. This is a one skein shawl. I love the Pico at the bottom. This is called the Shimmery Pearl by Lisa Hannes from Malia Designs. So that is what this is going to be. Okay, of course, this one was my favorite. Now you heard me earlier in the podcast say I wasn't going to let myself buy any blue yarn. This is called Malibu Barbie. This is a giveaway, you guys. I bought this for you. I just had to buy it, but I know I don't need it. So I bought this for you guys. So if you want a chance to win this gorgeous skein of yarn, which is Yummy Sparkle, a 75% Merino, 15% nylon, and 10% Stellina. Then all I want you to do is comment below. You can ask me a question that I'll answer on the podcast next time. You can comment on what you're working on. You can comment on um, maybe, have you been to Arkansas Yarn Crawl? Were you at the Yarn Crawl? Do you want to come next year to the Yarn Crawl? Um, just any kind of comment. I love getting comments on the podcast, which I know everyone including me. I watch things and I just think thoughts to type and then I don't always. So comment below. I will pull the winner the next podcast. So make sure you watch in two weeks and I will announce it on there. Otherwise, I will draw another name. So if you want to win this, make sure that you come back in two weeks and watch the podcast right away to contact me. So this gorgeous thing, I'm not keeping. All right, so I got a couple more things. This one I had previously ordered and I just picked up at the yarn store. Um, these are Tunisian crochet hooks. Uh, they're interchangeable, Chowgu. Uh, I had bought this, the Chowgu packaging to store the um, interchangeable set with a couple. And then I didn't know if I would catch on to it for sure. So I've just been ordered, like every time they put in an order of I order like one hook. But lately, as you've seen, um, I've been really into it. So I made sure to get some sizes that I've been using. Um, I do have an interchangeable set from Knit Picks, but I love my Chowgu. So I've been slowly collecting those. So that I had previously ordered, picked up. And then uh, there was a trunk show from my friend Sarah, who is the sexy knitter. And she of course has always a ton of things, but I just got a couple. Uh, the first thing I got, it's kind of crazy in here. It's like a necklace with little clips. And then it has, mine has a hot pink stitch marker there, gummy bear. Um, so I got that. And then this one you have actually seen before because I went to Midwest Fiber Festival where Sarah was vending and I saw this set and bought it for Lori because I mean, it just screamed Lori. Um, it has these delicate, beautiful pink flower stitch markers. And then as soon as I taken it home and given it to her and I'm like, why didn't I get one of those for me? That was so dumb. And so I was so excited when I saw that it was in the shop. So I bought one for me. All right. That is all my purchases. There was a couple of things I picked up for free at the yarn shop. First of all, um, Tristan, Dragon Horde Yarns, was there. Um, it was so fun getting to know her. And I actually stayed at Lori's house Friday night 
And so I got some like warm one time with Lori and Tristan and we stayed up late and she just had so much knowledge and encouragement and it was awesome getting to know her. So super enjoyed it. But there was a VIP event event Friday night, just to like a question and answer uh, free for all. But Lori, uh, being the overachiever that she is, she had gotten um, special little bags for those that went to the event because you had to buy a ticket. So I'll just kind of show you what was in there. Just some little knickknacks. So I got a little soak. Got one of her stickers that I have a couple of these already. So maybe I will put that in with the yarn for the winner. I'll put that in that package because I already have that sticker. A little of her teas. She is carrying this tea now in the store. So they had this one specially made dragon fruit, dragon hoard yarns. And then they got a special stitch marker of a dragon. She has a little phone ring with a yarn ball on it. A little mini skein of yarn, sparkle base. A little tag for you can put on your project bag with your name on it. And a sip sit knit bag. This is, you hear it clanging against each other. This is reusable straws. There's some straight ones, some curved ones, and then it has the little uh, brush to clean them in that package. So yeah, that was kind of just like a little bonus thing um, we got. And then the last thing I got was there was a group of ladies. They come every year to the yarn crawl. They're from Macomb, Mississippi. And one of them, who is Betty, who I sat next to all day yesterday. I was spinning next to her. And so I got to visit with her and she was just charming. And she, I think most of them were hers. They bought, brought four crates of like knitting or yarn adjacent books. And they just put them out and said, please take them. They're free. Take whatever you want. And so originally when they're like, oh, go look. And I'm like, I have so many knitting books. And I said, is there any spinning ones? And they're like, no, there's no spinning ones. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not even going to look. I don't need any more books. And then at one point I was back there because it was like in the dying part of the building. And Angie, um, I was talking to Angie's from our, my local Little Rock uh, knit crochet group. And she was looking through the books and I was talking to her while um, she was looking and I see her go past the book and I'm like, wait, go back one. There was a spinning one. I have seen this book on many podcasts. So this is just about spindles and spindle spinning. And so I was super stoked about this. Um, it's one that I haven't wanted to, you know, buy per se, because I don't really use my spindle much, but um Robbie, I'm name dropping a lot of people. Robbie really wants to pick up spinning and she has a spindle. And I said, oh, I'm not great at spindle spinning, but I can get you started. So I told her that I would look through this book and bring out mine and uh, dust it off. And so I'm super excited I found this book. So this was free. And then this other book, I'm sure if you've been to a Barnes and Noble, you have seen this book. It is a kid's book. It is a storybook and it's all about yarn. And it is the cutest book. Again, I don't have a little kid. So I've seen it many times and wanted to buy it just because. And this is a super, super cute story. And I'm like, I don't need to buy that book. But I mean, you're going to give it to me for free? Sure, I'll take it. <laughs> so I took this one too. <laughs> so I got two free books. So y'all, I got a lot of stuff. I... Now I have to find a place to put all this away and I need to get knitting. Uh, like I said, I know that this is bringing my totals of, as far as my goals of having more out than in over the top, which is fine. I'm okay with it. You know, we're in July. There's many months ahead. Um, as much as I want to go to DFW Fiberfest, as of right now, I'm not planning to. So there's no more 
fiber festivals or yarn crawls or anything like that in my future. So this was, you know, quite a special haul. Um, so now I just need to knit my stash of things that I have picked out for items, which I'm excited about. So again, not saying I won't buy any yarn because that's, I mean, come on, there's just no, but I really want to get started knitting these items that I want in my wardrobe. So I'm very excited. This was a long podcast, y'all. Um, thank you for sticking with me. If you did, please make sure you comment and you can win this beautiful special skein of yarn from the Yarn Crawl. Um, also like, subscribe if you haven't already. Share with other people and they'll have a chance to win this skein of yarn. And, you know, unless you don't want them to. But um, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys so much. And I will see you in two weeks. Bye.